open with one minute of breathing and relaxing. So I invite you to sit back, close your eyes if you're comfortable. Let's bring our focus on our body, our attention, on our breathing. And let's just, in this moment, connect with the breathing that's naturally going on. Let's take three cleansing breaths. With each breath, as you breathe in, go slower and deeper than the last one. Notice the pause, and then as you exhale, go even slower than the time that you took breathing in. And after the three breaths, let's let the breathing go back in its natural mode. Let's make an intention to be fully present and put our things to do on a side. And with that, let's rub our palms, put them over our eyes, coming back. All right, so welcome once again uh, to Motivational Mondays. My name is Jazz. Our new series for this month in celebration of August as the National Wellness Month is Balance Your Mind, Body, Spirit. Um, and in week one today, we will talk a little bit about holistic health. We'll talk about our mind, body type, our natural state of balance. We'll learn about a way to how you can determine simple ways and through quizzes how and where you're out of balance and then in the next three weeks we'll start to work on each of the areas next week we'll work on the mind how to bring ourselves back how to tone uh, our mind then week three we'll focus on body and the importance of mindful movement versus simply stretching we'll do a body scan meditation and week four we'll come back and talk about focusing on the spirit and fulfillment. Uh, so let's get started. And um, I think most of you know me from uh, Motivational Mondays, but I also run meetup.com for 15 plus years. I have a couple of websites where I blog and I'm trying to bring many teachers together again with the goal of uh, sharing ancient techniques and wisdom, but more for a modern uh, world pro professionals like us. And the quote here on the right, you know, is a uh, one that you may have uh, heard uh, in yoga studios or as a translation of Namaste, right? Which simply means that, uh, you know, the light within me honors the light within you. Uh, and the quote, couple of quotes I have for us to start with, and as we're talking about balance, is uh, scripture uh, is uh, that was written by Patanjali thousands of years ago called the uh, Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, right? And the first chapter talks about something uh, which we can loosely translate to meditation. And this is where uh, the first two stanzas, uh, to me, I found them very useful. Uh, the first one says that now begins yoga, right? Uh, which is not just stretching that we know of in the, in the West, right, that most people practice as yoga as or no yoga as, right? But the yoga of the union of the mind, body, spirit, right? Because if we can do that, that is the true purpose of yoga. And if we can do that, and we start with the mind as an example, then going beyond the movement, right? The movement, the physical movement, the, uh, the movement in our mind, the thoughts all over, right? That is that is actually the true yoga. Uh, we'll take some concepts from holistic health here, right? Which uh, in Deepak Chopra's uh, best-selling book, Perfect Health, is all about fostering better overall health, right? About daily routines, about unlocking mental, physical, and spiritual health, uh, changing our habits little at a time simple things that we can do and 
Deepak, I love this quote, says that, you know, the six pillars of health can really help you reinvent your body. Uh, and, you know, the six pillars that we have touched before, and some of these we will touch in this four weeks. The others will do a longer uh, series later on in the year, right? Uh, nutrition, uh, movement, we will cover sleep. We've covered in the January series. Meditation and self-care will again touch on. Or the other way that I found very helpful is that we have five senses. And one or any one of those senses can be utilized to help us bring ourselves back in balance, right? And we'll start to touch on them, some of them today, some more next week. So the sister science to yoga or uh, the you know uh, complementary science of yoga is Ayurveda, which uh, if you've never heard of it, is simply a Sanskrit term in which Ayu means life. Uh, and you know, Veda is think of as science. So it's the science of life that's thousands of years old and it can give us many simple ways to become uh, more balanced. And how? Uh, what really attracted me, and um, I hope you can explore Ayurveda in your own ways, is that it's preventative, right? Uh, what I love about Ayurveda, as an example, it says that absence of disease is not healthy, right? And when you're treating, uh, we all, each one of us can do things so that we can prevent, so that we can delay, so that uh, we can eliminate. Um, and I think I have one other quote that I've shared with you that really uh, opened my mind was that we may carry the genes, but our lifestyle dictates whether something will become a disease or not, whether we can prevent, uh, how we can reduce stress and anxiety. And again, reducing stress and anxiety is actually a side byproduct if you do practices like yoga or either follow Ayurveda. They become naturally something that when you exhale out, you let go, and with that goes away the stress from wherever it, it came. And lastly, again, it can help us balance, right? Uh, and second beautiful concept in Ayurveda is that there is no one size fits all, right? Because we all are different in many ways, and we each one of us is going through different things in life at different times, right? So this is where uh, it provides us with personalized ways, right? Tailored treatments, recommendations based on your characteristics and your needs and where you may find yourself out of balance. And just like preventative, right? It helps us create simple choices so our body has the intuitive healing capabilities. And with simple practical things that we can do, right? Whether it's food, whether it's sight, I'm in a beautiful place here today. Uh, right. It's it's what we choose to look at, uh, what we choose to pause and change can help us, uh, you know, change our body and change our lives. So how do we figure out, um, you know, w what is our type? And this is where the word dosha is a Sanskrit term, simply means your mind body constitution comes right. Uh, and there's three primary types of constitutions, doshas, vata, pitta, kapha. Uh, if those words are hard to remember or connect with, you can think of in elements because each of these types uh, represents uh, one or more elements. We all are made up of things around us, right? The five elements in the nature. And depending on our uh, constitution, one or other likely leads the way. We all have all five uh, so as an example, the one on the left, right, is the vata. So vata, you can think of, uh, if you think of birds, as the hummingbird, right? Why? Because it's uh, space and air. It represents movement. So think of a hummingbird that's going from one place to the other, right? And people that are generally vata leading are thin, they're light frame, right? Uh, and what you'll notice about that vatas are generally creative, they're artistic, they're energetic, they're full of many, many ideas, right? Uh, and which is a wonderful qualities to have uh, when they're balanced, right? However, when you get out of balance, meaning you get too much air. So for like me, I often use the example, like right now I'm traveling, 
right? And what that becomes, what brings is too much air and what that leads us to is an overactive mind, anxiety, worry, right? Fatigue, uh, you're not centered, right? So we, when we notice ourselves, whether uh, simply that you know that your body's not right, you're low in energy, you're not sleeping well, it's likely one of the first things that happens is this vata imbalance is in your body or mind. So the second one now is the pitta. And with that red color in the middle, what you see is it's because it's fire and water coming together, right? Which are wonderful qualities to have, right? We all need that fire in us. And the bird here is the eagle, right? Um, and people that are, you know, generally they're medium built, they have strong appetite, right? They are ambitious, they're courageous, right? They're very organized, they're go-getters. And pitta is generally, if you see somebody pitta, you you can tell through their eyes, right? They have an intense gaze. Um, and though in their balance, right, these are, this is what it looks like. They're, they're naturally, they can keep going. They're very focused, right? However, when there's too much fire, what happens, right? It causes uh, people to be angry, irritable, judgmental, aggressive, right? And then that translates into our bodies, right? Inflammation or indigestion, as an example. Uh, I lead with Pitta, and I can tell you personally that there are days when I'm like so much into work, and this happens for some reason to me always on Fridays, like it's five o'clock, but my mind is still going with work, right? So this is where, again, if you can notice that you uh, cannot stop working or stop putting, you know, something on your mind, it's a sign and wonderfully there are practices that we can use stretching and meditation as example to help us transition right and put the work on a side when we get back to our lives so the third one last one is kapha right so kapha uh, the bird you can think of as the swan right and they're naturally grounded they're centered uh, they could be heavy set right uh, slow moving good stamina, easy going, uh, and they're naturally steady, stable, grounded, laid back, right, which are wonderful qualities to have, right, um, when you're balanced. However, any one of us can have a kapha imbalance, right, and what that looks like is those days when you don't want to get out of bed, right, those days when you need the motivation, you need that push, you know you want to go to the gym or you want to go you said you will go for a walk but it's just taking that first step is harder right that's likely a kapha imbalance right uh so the good news is right there are simple ways to find out where you are to balance and that is that you likely already know right you likely know that am i all over the place that's vata right am i too intense that's pitta in the middle, right? Or am I, do I need motivation? Do I need the drive? Do I need that push? Uh, that's kapha, right? That's one simple way. Or the other is you can take these two quizzes. I had sent the link, I'll share it again in the chat. There are two quizzes. The first one with the P does not change, right? You can take it once. That will give you which one of these ones or combination or two is your natural state of balance, right? Uh, most people lead with one or two. What that means is your scores will be close. Very few people are equally three, uh, and that's what you have. So you'll know that, you'll keep that, uh, and you'll work with that, because when you're balanced, that's what your natural state will look like. The others, the second quiz that you can take is the Vikruti, right? This you can take every four to six weeks, or you can take every time you feel like something is not right and I just want to put my you know, hands on it so that I can do something about it. And what this will give you is where you have out of balance both in your body and in your mind. And then in coming weeks, we will share with you simple ways on what you can do about each one of them. Uh, all right, so with that, the next I have is a quote and an affirmation that we'll use in our meditation today and can be a centering thought for today and this week. 
So the first, it is the code is I am an exquisite expression of nature. And what that reminds me is that we all have five elements, right? But the combinations differ, our lives differ, but yet we are a wonderful expression. Regardless of what is going around us, we have the opportunities to work with it, right? And all we need is to balance. All we need is to take time to balance our mind, our body, our spirit, all three of them, or it can be one of them. So with that, let's do some stretching. Uh, I invite you to join me. And again, uh, let's work with our bodies. Uh, disclaimer that, uh, you know, again, one of the beautiful things that I love about yoga is that it reminds us that, right, to be compassionate, to work with whatever you are, not compare yourself to your yesterday, month ago, a year ago, or another person do it next to you, but work with your body. So with that, let's find a nice standing posture. And let's move left to right. Let's plant our feet by bending our knees, bending our elbows, relaxing our shoulders. And let's imagine a thread or rope that is pulling our head up. So we straighten our spine, we stand taller, and breathing in, we expand. And breathing out, we relax. So what I'll invite you next is to make this your own movement. Make it your own dance. Do it in your own ways as your body guides you. And see if you can bring a smile and relaxation, relishing the stretch on a Monday morning or afternoon. Let's take a pause. And since this month, this theme is about balance, we'll do a yoga posture or a form of it called the tree posture, tree pose. And if you have a chair or a table in front of you, I invite you to hold on to it. Let's lean on our right side, right foot, and take lift our left feet foot up and Whatever you're comfortable with, it could be down by your ankles, right? Simply by your ankles. If you feel more comfortable, it can be around the knees, above, below, right? Or anywhere in between. Or simple way to start is right here. And let's simply try to balance on one leg. Or you can hold on to your waist, chair. You can try leaving the chair or the table. You can try varying the position, whatever. Find one comfortable place that you can stay with for, say, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. And again, don't push yourself. Just do what's comfortable. And what this is simply is a reminder that in order to balance, we need to work on the flexibility of the body. To balance, we need to be aware and have a calm mind that can focus, help us balance. And from our spirit, when we connect with something bigger than our body, other than the body, right? We are, we have a body. We have the thoughts going, but there's something else. When we connect with that, the one that now, we bring our foot back, and we bring our palms together, is appreciative 
of this wonderful body that we have. We connect with that. All right, so let's pause again for a few seconds. And next, let's do some tapping. So I invite you to have a flat palm or a fist. Start from your fingers, tapping your inside of the arms, shoulders, back of the arms, going on to the other arm. And what we are doing is simply waking up our body, getting this energy to flow. Letting any tension, any blockages open up. Intuitively, you are tapping on acupoints. One more time, it's for a total of three. We have limited time, but on your own time, you can do it longer, 10 times. We'll do one time lower body. So let's start with our lower back. Go around the waist and down towards the top of the knees outside. If you feel comfortable, continue down below the knees outside, going towards outside of the ankles, inside of the ankles, and slowly coming back up, tapping inside of the thighs, legs, and ending at your stomach or shoulders, whatever feels good. And lastly, let's kind of shake it off, arms up and down, or you can take a long breath and let go. Two, three times, and with that, bringing the palms together again, rubbing them, putting it over your eyes, your face, Let's return back to our chairs, mats. And let's take about 30 seconds to settle. And we'll begin our guided meditation with today's Centering Thoughts. So settling in, in the back of the chair. Let's relax our body. Acknowledge, notice if your breathing is slightly more rapid. If your heart is beating faster. Perhaps relish and smile that on a Monday morning you already did a wonderful workout. In a few minutes, you've stretched, gotten a little bit of cardio, your energy is flowing, you're awake, you're alive. And again, let's take three cleansing breaths, slowing down the breathing purposely, as slow as you can with each inhale, go slower and deeper than the last one. And with each exhale, even more slower than the inhale. Asking yourself the question, if it's helping me, if it's not, I let it go. After the three breaths, let's let the breathing continue in its natural mode and asking yourself this question what is my mind body type naturally am i a hummingbird am i an eagle am i a swan I'm a combination of two. 
when I lead with my natural state of balance. And repeating the centering thought affirmation, I am an exquisite expression of nature. So acknowledging, celebrating the you, the unique you, that no one else is like, the wonderful, beautiful you. That when you are in balance, what that looks like. And now asking yourself this question, in this moment, today or yesterday or the last week, what is happening in my life and how is that throwing me off the balance? Do I see, can I feel any ways in which I'm off my balance? Am I too all over the place and not able to focus? Am I too intense? It's causing me to be irritable, angry not able to wind down. Or am I need, in need of motivation, in need of a push to get going? Either one of those three or more, wherever you are, Again, repeating an affirmation that I balance my mind, body, spirit. Or in your own words, I take time, I commit, I pause, I honor myself, I prioritize, balancing my body, my mind, my spirit. And see if you can connect with a smile in your heart that you've already started, the yoga has begun. With that, let's come back slowly, moving our fingers, our toes, bringing our palms together, rubbing them, putting them over our eyes. Slowly coming back, opening your eyes if you have them closed. All right, so I'll share again the links of the two quizzes. Please do take them or start noting down where you are out of balance. And next week, we will start to share with you some simple techniques. Have a wonderful day, week ahead. And please share in the chat one thing that you're taking with you uh, that you commit to start doing. Uh, and it may help someone else. Have a wonderful day and week ahead. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.